Hello, and welcome to BS with Bethany Simcoe. This is your host, Bethany Simcoe. Today, we have a very exciting guest with us. We have the one and only Kate Bannister, such a lovely human being inside and out. And so we are going to go ahead and introduce her really quickly. Say hey, Kate. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. A little bit about me. I've lived in Iowa my entire life. Depressing. I know. Got a mom and dad, a sister, a dog here. And then I just adopted a dog from Texas last August. He's my world. And then I'm moving to Texas August 1st. So he's he's going right back to where he came from. But I'm self-employed. I run two businesses. It's so much fun. I just dropped out of college. Yeah, we'll get into more of that in a little bit. We are. We're going to get into all of that because you are seriously such an inspiration. And she's also really, really great at She's so encouraging. Like if you guys ever meet her or have any interaction with her, like you're going to notice she's so encouraging. But a little bit about like how we met. We met like a year ago on literally TikTok, right? Yeah. So I had a little influencer group chat going with Sydney Del Rey and Kristen Tanzer. And I came across your profile on TikTok and I was like, I love this girl's energy. She's into sort of the Amazon stuff and also brand deals and stuff like that. So she'd be perfect. So I texted the girls and they're like, yeah, get her number. So I think I reached out to you. I don't know where those messages are at, but I was like, would you want to join our little chat? And then the rest is history. Here we are. I was like, no way. Because I totally see you on my For You page before. And I was like, no way. She just DM'd me. And it was like wild. I was so fangirling moment. But now it's like we've become such good friends since then. And now you're literally moving to my city. And I could not be more excited. Less than two weeks. Less than two weeks. So before we hop into everything about your move, I want to get to know a little bit more about you and your mindset right now. So tell me, what is one quote that is resonating with you right now? Okay, I found this one on TikTok, and I feel like it's very relatable to my current situation and stage of life that I'm in. So it says, a bottle of water can cost $2 at a gas station, $3 at a movie theater, and $7 on an airplane. The only thing that changes its value is the location. So the next time you feel like you're worth nothing, you might just be in the wrong place. And I think that's very, very relatable to my current situation because in Iowa, you know, there aren't many young entrepreneurs, especially women. So it's hard to find people to connect with. So I kind of feel like a lone wolf in a way. And moving to Austin is a great opportunity for me because there are so many young entrepreneurial people, like-minded people that are going to inspire me and lift me up and make me feel less alone so I think that quote is perfect I love that and I think that that's going to resonate with a lot of people that are feeling that way right now because that's how I felt like when I first made the move I was like I am too small or like I'm too big for this small city you know even though I feel like Iowa City is that where you live right now well I'm in Des Moines now but yes my apartment's in Iowa City I feel like those are like big ish cities but like the mindsets are small you know so One thing I noticed is like I'd go out and a lot of people in Iowa City followed me. So I'd go out to the bars in Iowa City and I'd have girls and just people come up to me and say, what you're doing is so amazing. Like I just I aspire to be like you and stuff like this. And that would tell me like subconsciously, you're solid, you're good where you're at. And it doesn't make me want to do even more. It's just like I'm comfortable here. Like people are acknowledging me. They're telling me I'm doing a good job. But I want to be somewhere where there are people miles above me that I can look up to and that will help me to further my goals, if that makes sense. Just having people to look up to and things to strive for. And I feel very comfortable here, which is not what I'm going for at this point in my life. That's a powerful realization. Having the courage to step outside of your comfort zone like that, like a lot of people would let that go to their head. They'd be like, yeah, I'm actually the shit because these people all look up to me. I get recognized in public. It's so easy to get comfortable there and even build an ego around that comfort zone. But it's so powerful. It's like that quote that like never be the smartest in a room, like most successful will never the smartest in the room or something. But that is, that just tells me a lot about you as a person that you are so willing to go chase something outside of your comfort zone that is a big deal to put it in perspective like if you drop me in the center of california i would be a nobody like my accomplishments would be so minuscule and i want to be surrounded by energy like that so i can strive to continue growing my success who i am as a person all that stuff that's a really good point because if you see a person over there like doing something insane you're like that's my bestie and they're doing something crazy like what am I doing? Let's hop on that. Like, let's go do something super fun. And like, you've got 
so many things already. You're growing so much. I cannot wait to see how you just really exponentially grow when you get here. Feelings mutual about you. Which is so much power in one Zoom call. Okay, we're kind of going back to a little bit getting to know you. I wonder like what's a current little treat of choice for you? I think you could probably guess what mine is. I've gotten it for probably the past 60 days consecutively. It's the pink drink from Starbucks with no berries and chocolate cream cold foam. You inspired me. I am obsessed with it. Like, you love that drink. I wake up and I crave. I'm like, I'm ordering it on DoorDash. I'm going to pick it up right this second because it like helps me get through my day. We love the chocolate covered strawberry. I've inspired that one, everyone. Go try it. That's so funny. I love that one. That makes me so happy. So what did you want to be when you grew up? Looking back at the trajectory of the things I did when I was younger, it was always starting lemonade stands, going around, passing out dog walking flyers for 50 cents, like a walker dog for 50 cents. At one point, I even found cool rocks throughout my neighborhood and tried to sell them door to door. So I've always had just like that salesperson entrepreneurial side to me. I don't think I knew when I was younger that that would translate into owning two businesses at 22. But I think that it's cool to look back on and see those little pieces of me that have always been that way. And then seeing it come to fruition now. Specific job wise, nursing is something I wanted to go into for a while, but I'm too sensitive for that. So that was off the table. And then an optometrist. I don't know where that came from. I just, I hyper fixated on things throughout my life and nothing really stuck. Off your banister. I couldn't like it. Absolutely not. No more school for me. Anyway, like I just, nothing really stuck until I looked back and saw, I was always starting businesses. I was always trying to do side hustles and make money for myself. And that's where I'm at today. So I think that's what I want it to be. That is so cool. I love asking that question because it really gives insight into, I think those first things you do when you're younger are yeah. things that genuinely fulfill you. Like there are things that you do just because you feel like doing them. And you seriously fall into the role of business owner so well and badass and entrepreneur, like all the things you shine doing that. And so I'm not even surprised at all that you did like lemonade stands and selling little rocks. Like that is so cool. I love that because you are so good. Like you could sell me spoiled milk. I don't even know. You could sell me anything. I'm like, yes. If Kate has it, I want it immediately. (laughs) Compliment. Thank you. Literally today I went to Sephora and got the Boombier cream. Because you had it when you came over. And literally, every time you walked past me, I was like, she smells so good. So I went and got it. You had to me. I actually just put the, that on before this video. I love we're both wearing it right now. Well, I am so hyped to get into this because you are such a radiant person. And I feel like that really shows through on your TikTok. So let's talk a little bit about like what made you want to start TikTok? What made you want to start influencing? How did that journey look like for you? It was never an aspiration of mine, to be honest. Like I never thought oh yeah, I'm going to become known for doing TikTok. When I got fired from my serving job, my sophomore year of college, it crushed me, crushed my ego, my confidence. And I didn't get another job after that. So I started posting, I made a new TikTok called Halls with KB, which is still what the name is today. And I started just posting everything I bought. I didn't think it was going to turn into anything, but I did like Walmart hauls, Shein hauls, thrift hauls, all the above. And I started growing an audience of people who trusted my opinion on certain things and were continually engaging with my videos. So I was like, okay, there's some potential here. And then I started getting the free stuff from brands to promote. And that was exciting for me. I remember the first pair of just like Iowa Hawkeyes joggers I got from this like collegiate loungewear brand. It was the most exciting day of my life. So I'm like, they gave me this for free? I think that moment is kind of what sparked just this drive to make it a career. I also watched a lot of Darcy McQueen when she did her giant holes where she had like packages stacked. And I was like, I want to do that. So I just tried to, you know, copy what I saw other people doing that worked and eventually joined the Amazon Influencer program. And that's where I'm at today. That's amazing. I love it. You have seriously grown so much. But at the same time, you've always been so natural on camera. Like from the second I found you, I was like, her vibe is so just like relaxing, like the lighting you had. I was always so insecure about how I came off on camera and not wanting to sound too forced. Because for you, for example, you can just set your phone down in your bathroom and just record some funny story or just say something funny and people love it. For me, I have to think about what I say before I say it. It doesn't just come out. And if I do that, it just does not work out for me. So I admire you for that. And I wish that I was more just spontaneous with the camera. 
it's still so interesting because I'm like the opposite. Like I admire you as being able to have like a script and like not like a script, but you know, like knowing what you're gonna say and like sticking to it. I never know what's gonna come out of my mouth at any point. So if I try to think through, like I'll think about like, okay, what do I what videos do I want to do tomorrow? If I script them out at all, it sounds like the most unnatural robot. Like you can tell I'm faking it. What do you think is like the hardest part about TikTok? Have you experienced any hardships in this journey? Well, I think initially I was nervous about what other people would think. Uh, Everyone has that little fear in the back of their head when they start posting things on the internet for everyone to see, to some degree at least. But how I overcame that was realizing that I am putting effort towards something that could better my future and create a business for myself. And it did. Whereas the people who are judging me and laughing at me and sending my stuff to other people talking shit, they are just sitting on their couch probably gonna work in an office for the rest of their life like tell me you're miserable without telling me you're miserable absolutely having that kind of mindset of I'm doing this for me I'm not doing this for anyone else has really helped me overcome just the fear of judgment and wondering what other people are saying about me and what I do I love that does it ever get to your head like when you're posting or when you're filming do you ever think about people Absolutely. I wouldn't say specific people, but it's more just like, what if I'm talking to a guy and he goes and looks at my TikTok and thinks it's cringy, which is so stupid because with how successful I've become, I should be like radiating confidence about my work and just being proud of it because I do work really hard. But at the same time, it's still just that tinge of fear. And I'll go back to my videos and I'm like, is this one a little too like calculated or cringy? And I'll debate maybe privating it. So yeah, of course it gets to me sometimes, but I think I've gotten a lot better as time has gone on. Yeah, I feel like there's that little bit of a stigma still. And having so much of yourself online, you know, like there's video after video after video of your face and your body. And like, that's so accessible to people. And that's kind of like a strange feeling. If a guy were to go look at that, there's just like so much of you that he gets to see. You don't really know him at all. I feel the same way. Like when I'm reporting sometimes, I'm like, is this stupid? Like, am I going to look back and like hate this later? That's also the best part about it, though, is looking back and realizing how much you've grown. So like post the crappy video or the video you think is cringy. You're going to look back on it and see how much you've grown. I love it. That's like my next question. What advice do you have to someone who is wanting to get into TikTok or into social media? So I think there's a lot of people who want it to do what we do and work with brands and work from home, make our own schedules. The thing I've noticed with people who will reach out to me and ask, how do I get started? Is if I help someone and get them started, they have to have the drive to continue that without my help. And what I've noticed is when I help someone, they won't continue after I've helped them. They're just waiting for me to give them the next step. You have to do the research. All the information's out there on YouTube, on TikTok, on Google. Like just Google whatever you're curious about or look up a video and go from there. You have to work through all those challenges yourself and kind of figure it out because that's what you and I both did and everyone in our chat. We all figured it out ourselves. And just having that drive for yourself is very important without someone else pushing you it's like in a sport if you only work hard when your coach is pushing you you're not gonna be starting or playing a lot but if you're putting in the work and you're constantly working super hard and you have the drive you're gonna be the best player on the team that makes sense I really yeah I love that I think that's very very helpful to hear because it really does take their own drive like your own drive because it takes so much trial and error And having a mentor is great and all, but like your mentor doesn't know who you are as a person. Like if you're trying to help someone, you, first of all, are a great mentor. I think that you have like a really innate like ability to help people and see where things can be improved. And like you're really good at communicating that. But even you don't know that person for who they are in every aspect. So they have to trial and error that out to figure out what works for them. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Speaking of which, what is it about helping people that makes you happy because I feel like you really do love helping people I especially love helping the people that I love obviously because I see so much potential in all of the people in my life and to see them succeed is like me succeeding personally if that makes sense but I think helping other people the energy you put out you're going to get back to some degree and you don't gain anything from being a shitty person and for ignoring people asking for help but like I said it comes to a point where you've helped them and they need to do it on their own after that, if that makes sense. Yeah, like give them a fish, feed them for a day, teach them to fish, feed them, whatever. (laughs) Make my weird little dad analogies. But does it ever get frustrating to you? Well, two questions. 
Do you ever get frustrated on TikTok with your content? And do you ever get frustrated with people asking and not implementing? Personally, with TikTok, I get frustrated, especially when those periods of like shadow ban come because obviously you're putting your hard work into the videos and then just like a random one will blow up at some point and it's like what did I do here that made it blow up but then this other awesome video I put out gets a couple thousand views Mm -hmm. it's very frustrating to not have the security and knowing your next video that's going to do well and make you money so I think that's my frustration with TikTok right now and then what was the second part of your question frustration with people asking like not implementing and even just for like seeing their potential and them not reaching it it, it more just makes me sad, especially when I help the people I love. Because my best friend, Taylor, if she watches this, bitch, you know I love you. But she has wanted to start her own business for the longest time. She's kind of miserable at her job and it pays like crap. And I've tried to help her start businesses. And she like has the name. She has the idea and everything. But she doesn't do anything outside of it. I'm just like, Taylor, you have so much potential. Pet photography is something she's wanted to do. So I'm like, Tay, you would be so good at that. You love dogs. You're very marketing oriented. You could be so successful. So I just, I want to see her succeed and I want to see her happy with her career. So I think that's where it's frustrating is I want to see her thrive and she's not right now. Absolutely. And I think that you are really good about taking leaps when it's uncomfortable. Starting a business is an uncomfortable leap. Posting on TikTok is uncomfortable. Moving to like across the country is super uncomfortable. So what is your biggest tip for people who are afraid to get uncomfortable? Who you know, Taylor, like what would be your biggest tip or someone who's like, I just, I want to start this thing, but that is terrifying. I mean, something I've told myself for the longest time is what you start today, yourself tomorrow will thank you for. It's kind of like doing chores. Like my room's a mess right now. If I pick it up today, tomorrow I'm going to be like, thank goodness I did that and didn't leave it for myself to do tomorrow. You have to be proactive in your work and getting things done and realize that your future self is going to thank you for the work you put in. And the more you push something off, the longer it's going to take you to get to that point of success, if that makes sense. So if I waited till, you know, my junior year to start TikTok, I may not have started my swimwear brand. I may not have gotten to go to an Amazon influencer event. There are just so many little things that could not have fallen into place if I didn't start when I did. So I think just taking the leap, just doing it, pushing through the uncomfortable phase will be very, very beneficial in all aspects. I love that. I really do. The Nike hat, just do it. But I love that. Like the more you do put it off though, I agree. It's like, do you really want these things or are you fine chilling out, being comfortable? So speaking of your swimmer brands, talk to me about the process of that. Like your thoughts behind it, starting it, what it's been like. So it's never my direct goal to start a swimwear brand. I just wanted a product of my name on it that I designed that was great quality, but also affordable. I I think that's everyone's goal to some degree that wants to make a product. But swimwear is a small item, so it's easier to store inventory and a lot of it. So I think that's why I was initially drawn to it. And I also just love bikinis. And then when you look at like custom design swimwear brands like Frankie's or whatever it might be, they're so expensive. Yeah. And I I could use the same fabrics they were using for much, much cheaper and not hundreds of dollars. And my market was college students. So I wanted to make it something that everyone could afford. So I think that's why I chose swimwear. And I wanted to start this other business because TikTok just kind of ended up feeling like work all the time. It kind of lost its spark for me. And creating my own business and my own products sounded so exciting. And I was feeling inspired. So I just went for it. I haven't even broken even yet, but it's just fun. It's just a fun process, finding manufacturer, designing the suits, getting your samples, approving the samples, getting the bulk order, putting up your website. I learned a lot of valuable skills throughout that process, which are very important to me. That takes a lot. Like all of those things together. You start a business like, oh, cool, just bikinis. But they don't see the stock in the ordering and the designing and the communicating. And you had a huge bump in the road. Your manufacturer, what happened with that? Yeah, so I had three tops and three bottoms that I designed and had samples manufactured for. And then in my bulk production, they told me they ran out of fabric for the third top and the third bottom. When I had paid for all of this fabric, thinking I was going to get all three styles, So I had to adjust and accept that I wasn't going to be getting a high-waisted bikini bottom, which 
really bummed out a lot of people and that I also wouldn't get a top with underwire for girls who wanted more support. It was more just disheartening for me because I knew that I had a customer base that would want that product and I had told them I was going to be able to sell it. So when I couldn't, it was, it sucked. But we pivoted and I think everything turned out great. I mean, the four styles that I have, I love, so... I'm happy with it. They're amazing. I really love them. I feel like the quality of them is great. I love the texture. I love the the cuts and the designs. They're incredible. So you did super well with that, even with the craziness that happened. You said your market is college kids, which brings me to our next little point. You just dropped out of college. Yes. So I'll give you a little rundown. From my freshman to my sophomore year, I was a nursing major. So I wasted two years taking nursing classes, and then discovered I don't like blood and I'm too sensitive for this field. So I turned to business, as most people do once they find out the medical field isn't for them. So I was marketing from my junior year to my senior year, but because I took those nursing classes, I had an extra year tacked onto that. So I just finished out my senior year in May, and I was thinking to myself, I just feel so held back. And I am a marketing major, but my marketing professors are like older men who don't understand the space that I'm in and are giving me just the old school marketing tips, which are great for some people. But for me, it didn't feel applicable. So I was thinking, why would I waste all of this money to learn from someone who isn't doing what I want to do? I'd rather have a mentor who is in the space I'm in and has more success than I do. So I remember the moment I, my heart is beating out of my chest and I go into my mom's room. I was not going to talk to my dad first. I know I brought this up before, but I like would really like to drop out of college. And she was like, I support you. I was like, come again. She goes, Kevin, I'm upstairs. Kate, I want to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, shit. Hugging my knees. Look her up like, what do I to say to this man? He walks in, sits down. I'm like, dad, I think it's time for me to drop out and start my life. And he was like, okay, you have my support. I just started bawling like I was I was gonzo and just to know that they believed in me and saw the success of my businesses and let me make such a big decision after spending four years and a lot of money on college was very validating for me and really upped my confidence just to know that I had that support behind me it was a special moment that is incredible I'm so glad that they supported you like that is such a good feeling I didn't expect it at all that's incredible and the way they like believe in you but hearing what you said about how you felt when you dropped out, that is literally word for word. I agree because I was majoring in marketing as well. And it's just like they, they don't get the social media space. Like even though they had some social media courses, just yeah. wasn't the same. And like learning by doing is so powerful. And that's what you're doing now. You've got so much time to learn by doing. I'm such a firm believer in that. And everything valuable I've learned pertaining to my businesses has been through my own research, not through anything school taught me. And I can't pinpoint a singular thing from any of my marketing professors that I carry with me and apply to my businesses, which is how I know I definitely made the right decision. So You're like, okay, SWOT analysis, let's go. <laughs> that wasn't helpful at all. God, no, that is, and for anybody listening, if you're considering dropping out of college, you're talking to the two coolest college dropouts in the whole life. World. No, I'm so incredibly happy for you. That is such a scary decision. But I like you're, you're going. I can tell that that was a really good decision. Do you feel like it lifted like a weight off your chest a little bit? In a way, yes. But I also want to touch on the other side of it is just not following societal norms and not finishing with a degree because it's scary. Like what if social media falls off the map or my account gets deleted and I have to join the real world without a degree? But I think taking that leap and believing in myself just helps me feel so much more secure about my future and knowing that I'm not going to let myself fail regardless of if I have a degree or not. That's a powerful um, mindset. I'm not going to let myself fail. I like that. And that I will always have my own back and that I'm so smart in marketing and making connections that I will find a way regardless. I mean, you've gotten yourself to this point. You know, if you have to pivot and get yourself to another point, having that confidence in yourself is amazing. So we've kind of talked about your life in Iowa. You've done all these incredible things already. And this is, it's hilarious to me that you're like, oh, I'm comfortable. I'm like, you are already out the door with all these incredible things. I cannot wait to see what's quote unquote outside of your comfort zone. Because if these are in your comfort zone, I can't even imagine what's going to be like outside your comfort zone, like what you're going to achieve. So talk to me a little bit more about your move and what made you choose Austin. So when we visited in April, 
you, me, Bailey, Sydney, Alyssa, we had our little trip. I felt so free and loved and just excited about the space I was in. Granted, we were at a very expensive Verbo in the hills of Austin, but at the same time, just like when we went out to restaurants or when we were just walking around the city, it felt so exciting to me and usually new is scary to me. So that was my first little taste of like, I love it here. After I graduate, I want to move here. And then Bailey actually reached out to me. This is my friend who lives near my college town. She also is moving to Austin with me. She reached out and was like, I kind of want to move in August. And that's when I asked my parents if I could drop out. So I was like, Bailey, you want to move to Austin together? And she was like, hell yes. So we texted you and Alyssa and made that decision, started looking for houses. And then we visited for that week and got to know you a lot better. That was such a special like bonding week for us. And it's such a special trip. Yeah. We love, love you so much and just cannot wait to live near you. And We found our place, signed the lease. And when we visited during that week, yes, I had anxious moments, but it was also combined with excitement, which is how I knew it just felt right. And it felt amazing. Like, I just am so excited. Amazing. I feel like your intuition was so on point with this one. And paying attention to your body, I feel like that's an important thing as well to know that you really pay attention to like how your body was feeling and how your mind was feeling about these things. And that's just incredible. What do you hope that Austin is going to bring to you? Like, what do you hope your life is going to look like here? So number one, very, very surface level, but I am so sick of Iowa winters. I cannot deal with negative temperatures anymore. So that in itself is a very, very big thing I know Austin will bring to me. Hot weather. I'm a sweaty bitch, but at the same time, I'd rather have that than snow. So for sure. And the winters are going to be delightful when it's like 60, 70 degrees. So That's one thing. Another thing is like I kind of touched on just the ability to strike up a conversation and make connections so easily. I was able to do that at your apartment pool party where I met a guy who puts on fashion shows. And then he was able to introduce me to the owner of the hotel we were at who said I could rent out his space for pretty much free for a fashion show for my swimwear brand. And I made that connection at one pool party in one week that I was in Austin. So I'm just imagining all of the opportunities that will be coming my way in terms of the people I meet, the connections they have. And I know that I can bring so much to other people's life. Like, I don't want anything to be transactional. I want to make authentic connections where I genuinely feel I can provide value to people and they can do that for me. Right. So I think that's definitely something I'm hoping Austin will bring for me. Also just a healthier lifestyle. There's so much to do outside. There's a lot of healthier, like, fast food options or just food options in general and a lot of young people so yeah it's a very active city everybody's very friendly I feel like everyone's new so everyone's like trying to make friends but truly I'm really excited to see how that goes and I think it'll just be so healing to be around so many people with like dreams absolutely I love that so stress levels how are you doing I go through moments I feel like at night it gets really bad I'm always anxious at night just because it's dark and it feels like the world is ending. I have panic disorder, which I want to touch on a little bit. I was diagnosed, you could say, last July or August, and it was a big struggle. I didn't leave my parents' house for a good two weeks, and I could not be left alone. I started medication, which definitely helped, but I'm still having panic attacks, I would say, every two weeks or every three weeks or so if I get like a ton of adrenaline built up. So that's been one of my biggest concerns stress-wise, I guess you could say, about moving. My dad has panic disorder as well, and he's one of my biggest supports in helping me breathe through a panic attack when I feel like my life is over and like doomsday is here. And being far from him is scary, but I know he's a phone call away, so I'm not too worried about it. And every other aspect of Austin is exciting to me. So if I let that one piece of me hold me back from moving, I'm going to regret that a thousand percent. That's kind of my mindset right now in terms of stress and mental health. But it's way more excitement than anxiety and stress. I love that. That's such a powerful statement, especially for people who do struggle with mental health and are like a little bit overwhelmed and intimidated by such a big life change. Because if you're so comfortable and like, you know, even being here and being out of your environment, it's stressful and it's scary. And moving into something brand new, I think is very intimidating for a lot of people. So it's really inspiring to hear that you are intimidated, but still going. Like it's scary, but you're yeah. doing it anyways. Like that is so inspiring. I love that. 
And the thing that I kind of keep on the back burner as just like an emergency type situation is I can always drive home and stay for a couple of weeks if I need. I'm not stuck here if it gets really bad. But if I'm so afraid of that, it's going to happen. So I need yeah. to just embrace whatever comes and work through it. Maybe start therapy. Like, who knows? We'll see. I love that. And what are your tips for the packing itself and like the finding a house and figuring out the logistics of the move? How was that stressful, Ben? And like, what are your biggest tips for managing that stress? So it's all been figured out now. It did take a week or two to get everything coordinated. I think packing up my life was just the biggest stressor for me because I can't bring everything I own to Austin. It's not feasible. And I also just kind of want a fresh start. I want the things that bring me comfort and joy, like clothing items that I look at and excite me. Getting rid of a lot of my things helped alleviate my stress because I don't have as much to move. Looking for a fresh shirt is amazing. It's so important. And I think that's like one of the biggest positive side is it really is like a fresh start and you get to figure out who you are, what you want to keep, what your style is. Like this is a prime time to change your style and your habits and your like the people around you. If you could tell one year ago you anything and one year from now you anything, what would you tell them? So to my year ago self, I would say that it's okay to not take the traditional path and to take a chance on yourself. Because a year ago, I hadn't started my swimwear brand. I hadn't even considered dropping out of school. Austin, I had never been. So just knowing what was coming for myself, I just want to tell myself, it's okay to not be stuck in this situation you've been stuck in for the past four years. And then to my future self, I would just say, I'm so proud of you for taking the leap and taking a chance on yourself because I know current me is not going to regret it. And I'm just very excited to see, you know, girl, do you have a man's yet? Just how is life? It, I, I know it's going to be a good update for myself when I watch this back, but absolutely all, all the good things to my future self. Then I'm excited to interview you again in the year and just like hear all the growth and we're gonna be like, holy cow, how was that a year ago? That's going to be beautiful. What do you think is the biggest thing? Well, I guess we maybe you've talked about this already a little bit, but is there anything that you are wanting to change about your life or your lifestyle in this move? Like, what is the biggest thing you want to change about your life right now? I'll tell you, yes, there are a lot of changes I want to make. I think I, I'm being toxic towards myself right now because there are so many changes I want to make in terms of working out, eating healthy, getting outside, making connections. And I'm holding it off until I get to Austin. I'm saying like, I'm going to do this when I get to Austin. I'm going to do this when I get It's like, why not start now? So I'm really trying to find the balance between fresh start, let's add all these new habits on, and why not start this now? But yeah, like I said, working out consistently. There's a couple of gyms I looked into in Austin, like Pilates type stuff too. Eating healthier for sure, because what you put into your body is how your mind is going to feel and how your body is going to feel. Just being outside in nature I feel like it's also so important and something I don't do enough. Those are all incredible goals. Those are all going to be really fun to see how you incorporate that. So I just want to say that I think Austin would have been way more intimidating to me without knowing that you're there and that Alyssa is there. You guys are such a comfort and an inspiration to me, knowing that you just have made this life for yourself in such an exciting city, especially you, because you started over from basically nothing, knowing nobody besides maybe your sister and just moving to a new place, taking a chance on yourself. I think without your personal testimony, I would not be making this move. So I'm just grateful to have met you. I'm so glad for myself that I reached out to you when I did because sometimes I get nervous and I'm like, are they going to like me? Or are they going to think this is weird? Anyway, I'm so glad I did. And I love you so much. And just thank you. Oh my gosh. I am so glad we met as well. And I am honored that you are coming to my city and that you are taking a chance on yourself. I love, I love that phrase. It's like, okay, is this going to work? Maybe, maybe not, but we're doing it anyways. One final question for you. What is your end goal? Where do you want to be? Like when you are thinking about it, you're like, what do I want my future to look like? I'm going to start on more of a superficial level and then I'll get into more of the deeper stuff. I think superficially, I would like to invest in real estate, particularly in Austin, because it's definitely an appreciating market. And it's always going to be a hot spot as far as I'm concerned. So getting a duplex, living in one side, renting out the other, then moving on to my next property and fully renting out the duplex, stuff like that. I definitely see in my future because it's a great way to make passive income. And it's separate from, you know, the Amazon, the bikini stuff, it's physical assets, which I love. Get a little bit deeper 
I have a huge passion for animals and the shelter I adopted Woody from is, I think, an hour and a half from where I live. So I want to volunteer there once a month and eventually start making really big contributions every so often because that's so important to me. A lot of their kennels are outdoors. So just being fun an indoor space with air conditioning and stuff like that, I think would be super cool. And then just giving back in general, I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but Jenna Pellick is a great example of that. She donates to so many amazing organizations and raises so much money. It's on the events. And I, she's just someone I aspire to be like in terms of giving back. So I think that's going to be a very large part of my future. I just don't know what exactly that's going to look like yet. It is beautiful. I love that. Also, more superficially, I better have a sexy ass entrepreneurial husband manifesting a year from now when we have this interview that I've got a man just like keeping his head around the corner like, sup, like, hey, babe, there's my, there's my hubby. I can't wait to say the word hubby. There's my husband. Good night. Okay, yeah, you better never have a hubby. I literally will kill you. We're never allowed to say that again. Perfect. No, that is incredible. I love how generous you are. I love how good your heart is. You are literally made of pure gold. And it is my honor to have you. Welcome you to this wonderful city. Yo, know, same about you. And I hope the next two weeks there's a class because I've just been anticipating it so much and planning out every little thing I want to do. Second I get there and it's going to be good. Here it comes. It's coming in quick. I'm so excited. I feel like we learned a lot about you. We got a lot of insight. And I hope anybody listening pulled a lot of courage from hearing you. Like your route is so non-traditional right now. You're up and moving across country. You dropped out, business owner, like so inspirational. And I hope that anybody listening drew courage from that, drew strength, inspiration from that. And it was my honor to have you on the podcast today, Kate. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I cannot wait to see you. I'm so excited. Let's go explore Austin. Let's go cause some chaos. This has been BS with Bethany Simcoe. And I will see you guys when I see you.